I think we're live, Rob. Hey, finally! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Welcome to our December Lightroom Hangout. And uh, we had a couple of connectivity issues, but I think we've sorted those out. So apologies for the late start. Uh, Jack, seeing no sound or video. Hopefully that's resolved now. So hopefully you can hear that's us. Right. Uh, let us know. Hey, good. Dana can hear us. Good. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, hey, Levi. How are you? Hey, Rob, I'm good. <laughs> Thanks. There's always Thanks something. Much. Little, uh, there's there's you know. always a little something. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm broadcasting today from my dad's basement yeah. <laughs> in Colorado. All so, right. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And uh, give your family my best when, when you see them, when you emerge from the basement. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, you're in uh, Colorado basement. I am, uh, I'm, I'm at home in New Hampshire. So, Excellent. Uh, it's nice to, be, nice to be home, so it's nice to be traveling, too. Um, Very good. So we've got some uh, Lightroom tips. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. To end the year. Um, fun. Give a big thanks to our sponsor, HDR Soft, oh, man. makers of Photomatics. Um, so probably have a plug-in tip or two uh, in the mix. And uh, we're giving away uh, a copy of their software. Is that, is that true? That's right. Oh, That's good. Right. We got that on. So if you... If you would like to enter the raffle for a complimentary license for HDR Soft's Photomatics, please weigh in with a question or a comment in the group chat. And that is how you get entered into the raffle. Yeah, and let me, sh let me share this um, screen capture that seemed to help uh, in the past. So I, I went ahead and, uh, is that showing now? You see my there we screen? go, yep. All right. So you have to be on the um, Hangout page. So this is one of our older Hangouts. But on the Hangout page, you're actually you're watching from there. And then once you're in the video, you'll see this little grid of, but of icon up here. Click on that, and then there's the Q&A button. Clicking on that will open this little side panel. And then you can click this green button to ask a new question or leave a comment or say happy holidays or whatever you want to say. Or plus that, one somebody's comment. That's helpful. Yeah, you can plus one the existing comments or questions. And then we will uh, answer those questions as best as we're able uh, through the course of this. So hopefully that helps for anyone who – maybe if you just tuned in from the uh, photo focus page or something like that, you might not have known. People always wonder, how do I get to the Q&A? So hopefully that helps uh, anyone who's trying to get in there. Oh, good. So it looks like people are able to hear us now and see us now. Good. All right, Excellent. Good. Awesome. All Thank right. you. All right. So um, while our viewers are queuing up their questions for us, who would like to go first? Uh, well, why don't you go first, Rob? Hey, all right. All right. Well, how about I share my screen again? Excellent. And uh, let's just dive right in. So uh, most of the questions that I get, can you see my uh, – Yes. Yeah. Looking good. Most of the questions I get are actually about library-related issues, file management, that kind of stuff, going missing or problems, organizing, all that kind of stuff. Nobody really ever asks, how do you develop a photo? <laughs> um, so a lot of my tips are going to be focused around library stuff. Uh, but if you have questions about other stuff, happy to entertain those too. And so one of the questions I get a lot is to do with this metadata conflict icon. So on this little thumbnail here, it's a JPEG image, there's this exclamation point on like an index card. I don't know what that icon is supposed to be, but it's saying, let us know we have a metadata has a conflict. And it sounds alarming, but um, it's really not that big a deal. Now, for me, I only ever really use Lightroom to manage my photos. You know, I'm not using any other program. Uh, right. to do stuff. And even though I use Photoshop as a more like an external editor, I never really use Bridge. I don't use I don't like save metadata to my photos so that I can open them up in Bridge and see the adjustments or do any keywording in Bridge or so I never really do any metadata additions outside of Lightroom. I'm the same way and I, I think that's a good tip, Rob, is if you use Lightroom, just use Lightroom. Yeah. You know, for some people, maybe they're working in a multi-user environment, or maybe maybe they're in a situation where they're using Lightroom, but other people are using Bridge and they're accessing the. I don't know. There's all kinds of scenarios, but if you know for sure you're not editing metadata outside of Lightroom, then it's really easy to resolve this. So if you click on that little icon, you're going to see 
this really confusing <laughs> dialogue. Um, it's what it's saying is the metadata for this photo has been changed by both Lightroom and another application. And then, OK, now I know no other application changed anything, at least not knowingly, because I've not done anything outside of Lightroom to change the metadata. But let's imagine something somehow changed. I don't know what it is. So the question is, should Lightroom import the settings from disk or overwrite disk settings with those from the catalog? And I get that question. People ask me, what the hell does that mean? So sorry to, <laughs> sorry to swear on our holiday episode, but it just, this one just drives everybody crazy. So what does this mean? So import settings from disk means, do you want Lightroom to take the, the metadata that exists in this photo's own metadata space outside of Lightroom? and bring that information into the catalog, which would, in effect, overwrite any information in the catalog with the information stored in this photo's metadata. Now, <clears throat> for me, I would never use that because I never add metadata outside of Lightroom. The only place this might be useful is if, for some reason, you um, maybe you like keywording in Bridge. And so maybe you added some keywords to a photo in Bridge, and now Lightroom says, hey, something changed outside of Lightroom. I'm letting you know. I'm doing you a favor. Then you would say, yeah, I want to import the settings from disk because I've already written from Lightroom to this photo's metadata. Now I've changed it knowingly and intentionally outside of Lightroom. And now I want to bring all the new stuff back into Lightroom. All right? Yeah, or like, or like photo mechanics. Some people use photo mechanics. Yeah, sure. OK. So if your workflow calls for doing that stuff outside of Lightroom, then that's a situation where you might import the settings from the disk, now it, importing the settings from the photo's metadata back into Lightroom. Because yeah. Lightroom always treats the information in the catalog as the primary source. So it's saying, hey, I think something changed. I don't know what, but I, something seems to have changed. And how do you want me to handle that? But for the rest of us, if you know you haven't done anything outside of Lightroom, um, you have two options, really. You could ignore it, because who cares if there's a metadata conflict? Because <laughs> Lightroom is still going to just use the catalog anyway. So you can just continue on with life and be happy. But if you find that looking at that is so grating, annoying, uh, you know, that you just want to get rid of it, um, you can choose overwrite settings, which is the default. And what does that mean? Well, that says, hey, Lightroom, why don't you just take the information that's stored in the catalog about this photo and write it back to the photo's metadata so that the catalog and the photo's metadata are now in sync. So one option or the other, the goal is to have the same information in both places, the catalog and the files metadata, all right? And so you just need to choose which one is the right one for you. So I'm going to choose Override Settings, Lightroom writes from the catalog to this photo, and now that's resolved. It's gone away. And for me, nothing changed because I haven't done anything outside of Lightroom. So we're all happy and, and we're good to go. So. Awesome. All right, so there's my first tip. Excellent. And my my tip actually relates back to your tip because there's one other time when I get that problem and it's when I use a plugin. Ah. I'm share my screen here. And so if I've, um, let me just check and see if I don't have a, a question mark on one of these pictures here. But I'd like to also just show you real quickly how to access your plugins because that's a question I get a lot lately. And if, there's a problem with Lightroom where it wasn't, excuse me, it wasn't uh, re-importing properly from a plugin. Like this picture has this problem right now where it's got that metadata question on there. Uh -huh. So we'll pull that up. And now if I hit import settings from disk, it imports the changes I made in, um, in the plugin. Okay. Adds them in here. And... If you're if you haven't updated to uh, what are we Lightroom six point three yeah point three yeah. then twenty fifteen point three yeah twenty fifteen point three or six point three right yeah <laughs> you'll you'll have this problem more frequently with pictures coming back from a plugin um, and so so that's that's why that that's the other time when I see that that problem. Now, to access a plugin, like Perfectly Clear is a plugin I've been showing off a lot lately. So I can right click on a picture and choose Edit In, and then there's Perfectly Clear. Um, it shows up in my list right under my Photoshop, 
and there's all the other plugins I have as well. My my Nick stuff, my um, on one perfect photo suite is here. Uh, my uh, Mac Fun tools are here. If I had Topaz or DxO, I think they'd all show up here too. Um, and then we could also access them by going to the where Rob. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on the it depends on the plugin, but on the um, plugin. yeah, and then the go. plugin extras. Yeah, plugin extras right there. And well, then for some of them, yeah, under the edit in menu. Right. So it really it really depends. It's it's how um, within the uh, whatever the third party developer was able to access, you know, for that particular tool. Right. Um, most of them, you know, are just under the edit in. You know, if it's just a if it's just a pixel editor of some sort. But some of the other ones um, have have an option uh, to go under the uh, the extras menu there. Yeah. yeah. Well, like like if I want to access the whole on one photo suite, I have to go through the plugin extras menu. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a mystery meet menu kind of thing. Because you're yeah. like, yeah, who who knows that? <laughs> you have to really click it because you wouldn't. You know, it's. The thing about Lightroom for me is I often, you know, you, after you get using it for a while, you're just using keyboard shortcuts. You're barely ever right. going to the menu, right? To drill down to see what might be, you know, buried under there. So yeah, the keyboard shortcuts are just so marvelous in Lightroom. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll have to share a couple of those. Well, and so then the other plugins I use, which are particularly for um, HDR work, are under the export dialog when you right-click on a picture. Right and. I, th I think that's because it, it requires uh, working with multiple pictures at once. I'm, I'm not sure exactly why they're under the export, but that's where they are. So if you're looking for your, your photomatics or your HDR effects or um, any of your other HDR tools, they're under the export dialog. Yeah. And I've been doing a lot lately with um, photomatics on a single image, doing tone mapping on a single image and really? enjoying the way that that's working out. So. I've been accessing that one quite a lot. Cool. Hey, so Jack's asking a question on this. So he says, so if you've been doing work in a plugin and get that message, should you select import from disk? Yes. Um, it, it really will only matter if you've if the work you've done in that plugin has changed the metadata, right? If you're right. just if you're just changing pixels, um, then it it shouldn't matter. Well, it, it shouldn't, but it does. I, I don't know why. Like, like here's here's the original picture. Here's my DNG. Right. And I don't get the question mark on my DNG. Right. I'll get the exclamation mark on my new TIFF file. And even though it's a pixel editor, for some reason, it's not it's not showing the changes, um, starting with, with Lightroom 6.1 and, and 2015.1. The, the latest update is doing a much better job. Sometimes I still have to hit that button. Huh. It sounds like what it's doing in that case is it's forcing Lightroom to update the preview or something. But That must be, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but otherwise, I mean, in, in a case where you're sending a copy to another editor, the copy should have all the metadata that started with the original. And now yeah. if you make any changes in that copy um, and you choose import from disk, there should be no difference between what's in the catalog and what's in the what's in the copy if all you've done is change pixels around. But maybe if that editor, that third party editor, has also changed some of the metadata, that might explain um, the message. But I don't see why that would make it change the uh, the look of it because Lightroom's not Lightroom's not re-rendering uh, the data based bug. on the settings. Yeah, right? no, it, it's a, it's a weird bug. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't have anything to do with the metadata really. Right. Um, and so even though even though I have to do this, sometimes I even have to force it by right-clicking and choosing metadata, and then choose read metadata from file, right. and then it'll import. <coughs> it'll it'll so in either case, it should do no harm because it should be the same already in both places. Right. The metadata is the same, and yeah. and again, yeah, we're doing this on the TIFF file when it comes back from a plugin. It's on the new file that we made, not on my original DNG file. Yeah, I think Lightroom just gets kind of weird with that. It, maybe it's a little oversensitive to what it perceives as a change. <laughs> it's in its teenage years. <laughs> that's true. They're very <laughs> emotional and that's right. mercurial, as they say. <laughs> mercurial. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Let's see. Yeah. There's a, another question uh, from yeah. Cecil is asking, is there a way to put text in Lightroom 
other than slideshow module. So if you want, I guess you're saying if you wanted to put text on a photo instead of just using the slideshow module, how else could you do it? Well, I guess um, technically you could use the print module um, and an identity plate, and you could put text on an image that way, and you could then use the uh, export to uh, JPEG option. So I guess I can, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, since I'm so good at doing my hand signals of what it should look like. Uh, so if I went to the print module and say I wanted to just put some text on this image, uh, a couple ways I could think to do that would be the identity plate gives you the most flexibility. Right? Or similarly, the book module would give you similar options. Yeah, I guess that's true. You could do a lot that way if you need, but that that's kind of an onerous it is <laughs> to create a book just to put yeah. some text. But I guess you're technically correct. I could say, you know, here is some um, text. I could change the font and the color of the font, the size of the font. Can't do too much, but I could put that on there, and I can reposition it and resize it this way. So that would be that would be one option. I guess you could do. Um, you could also use the watermark function if that made a difference for you for applying a watermark. Right. And if you needed another option other beside the um, identity plate to make a <laughs> do something else, or maybe to put even in a, a graphic logo type of thing, but um, you know I could put that in there too. So I mean that, that I guess that would be another way to do it. Um, but Lightroom doesn't you know it's not really meant to be doing layouts like that with text, so it's kind of limited. So slideshow might give you the most flexibility or ease. And then you could export those out as a JPEG. But so say this was the final version that I was going for. I could go into the in the print job um, panel under this print to menu. By default, it's going to be set to printer. But if you wanted to save this out as a JPEG, I could set that to JPEG. I can click on custom file dimensions, and I could put up to I think it's quite large. But let's just say I needed this to be you know really big. Now, unfortunately, you can only do it in inches. Um, you can't dial in pixel dimensions, but pixel dimensions are essentially a function of inches and your resolution. So you could do some math if you needed to get to a certain pixel dimension. I usually just re-import it into Lightroom and then export it. It's just so much easier to, to go Command or Control E, Photoshop, put your text on and see it out. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, that would be the easiest way to do it. So, uh, But yeah, you can do all kinds of contortions in Lightroom to try and not use another program. but um, You'll have much more, much more success, I think, uh, using using Photoshop, unless it was just some simple line. Um, you know, I've got a tutorial on Photo Focus about how to use the print module to do a fine art layout with a mat around it and custom text included on there. And yeah. so, if you if you go to Photo Focus and search uh, fine art layout or something like that, then that ought to to pop you up with some some step by step ideas for manipulating Lightroom beyond what it's designed. <laughs> Yeah. Um, all the questions just went away. I'm not seeing any more questions here. Oh, there we go. Oh, sorry. I I, uh, I cleaned them up. Oh, you cleared them up. OK, yeah, good. Right. As long oh, as you're, yeah. you're in control there. Yes. Uh, uh, Craig says, uh, thanks and happy holidays. Great New Year. Uh, same to you, Craig. Um, all yes, right. You guys, you know, we've, we've got a lot of regular folks who tune in, Rob. And we're, we're glad you guys are here, like Jack and Cecil and, and Elena. And, and it's we're thank you. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Do uh, you want to go with another tip since I uh, took that question? Uh, sure. Um, yes, I'd like to show you. Oh, I've got to show you my screen, first of all. Uh, and don't forget, you can just add a comment. It's just fine for being entered. Don't have to always ask a question, though we like right. questions. That's right. OK, so in, if you have the Creative Cloud, then this is a marvelous tool. And if you don't, in my opinion, this is worth the Creative Cloud. <laughs> um, I, honestly. And, and I mean, look, Adobe's not a sponsor right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am saying this from absolute, I use this thing every single day. And I think you should too. And it's, it's Lightroom Mobile. And ah, okay. all we have to do is create a collection under our collections tab. And you know, you just click on this button, create collection. I named mine Instagram because that's what I'm using it for. And in my Instagram uh, collection folder, I've got a few collections. And any collection I've got anywhere in, in my uh, 
in my whole stack of collections here, there's a little box here on the left. And this little box allows me to sync this collection, we're gonna stop syncing, with uh, Lightroom Mobile, which is pushing a small version of these photos out to the web, and then I can import those onto my phone. I, well, they, they just automatically sync to my phone to, and, and to my iPad, and gives me my wonderful pictures, well, I think they're wonderful, on my mobile <laughs> devices so simply. And so, so I've got my Instagram folder here, and it, because I, I call it Instagram because I use it for Instagramming. It, it allows me to put not phone photos on Instagram. Right. These aren't pictures I shot with my phone, and they are, you know, I, I get to put my best work out here. And here's how I do it: I right click on the on any fold on any collection, and I choose Set as Target. Hey, hold up. hey Levi, uh, just a couple of questions that people are not seeing your screen. Oh, are you seeing my screen? I do see your screen, but maybe I have a special connection with you. So I'll maybe try, <laughs> try unsharing it and resharing it. Of strong with this one. Uh, okay. Yeah, because uh, George and Jack are not seeing you. Okay, let's try it again here. And Thanks for letting us know, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, so can you see me, George? I see, I see oh, you. Oh, that's the problem because I wasn't clicked on. I'm using the cameraman. Yeah, okay, now... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for piping up, guys. We were we were looking at Rob's beautiful face. Okay, now you should be able to see my screen. Is that right? Hopefully. Yes, no. I, Hopefully yeah, no. I see you. Let's see. Alan said he just saw me, but I think that was in response to the previous. Okay, somebody weigh in and say, Levi is good to go screen sharing. <laughs> I did this. I did this for like 15 minutes the other day when I was doing my own tutorial because I couldn't see the questions. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why I'm trying to watch that. It's like somebody text me if there's a if there's a problem. I know what I can do. Are we in? Are we, on, are we we should be on my screen. Yeah, yes? I just yeah I just started running it. I see your uh, I see your screen on the stream. So okay, should. good. Okay, so here we are. Create collection. Create collection. Thanks, Elena. Just to. That. The key thing is that you click on this little box over here and it synchronizes this collection with, and let me zoom on that the little box here, this, this little checkbox. It, it's like a, a lightning bolt back and forth. And it syncs the pictures in this collection with my Lightroom mobile uh, online presence thing. And this is, this, I mean, this is actually kind of amazing itself is that excuse me, Adobe is giving us apparently unlimited storage space um, on their server somewhere to host these pictures. Yeah, I, that, that doesn't, it doesn't count against your, uh, if you have like the full Creative Cloud subscription. Right. You get, I don't know, two gigs or whatever the amount of space is. This does not count against that. So. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm syncing the, that catalog. Now, the, the best thing is to right click on, it, on that collection and choose set as target collection. And now whenever whenever I'm, so I'm, I'm up here in a folder somewhere, I've got a pictures I just imported and um, and I'm, I'm searching through, like here's, here's some pictures I shot on Saturday. And as I'm going through here, you know, I'm looking at this picture, I'm like, oh, that's cute. Here's some cuteness of my daughter. Yeah, of course it's oh, cute, here's it's your kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. so I wanna share this picture. All I have to do is press the letter B as in boy. And it says, add to target collection. And your wife's like, Levi, I'm going to kill you for sharing this picture of me. Right. Not paying attention to the camera. <laughs> because that's what I would hear. That's right. And now I've got this little, uh, this little sync icon in the corner of the picture, telling me that it is, in fact, synced with my Lightroom mobile. And if if I clicked it on the wrong one or if I found a better picture, I just press B again and it removes that picture from the target collection. And, uh, and so as I'm cycling through pictures, I just click on that little B button all the time and send them over to uh, be ready for sharing on Instagram. Because now I open my picture, oh, I better stop sharing. Oh, I don't have my phone down here. I changed rooms. <laughs> That's right. Um, but but so now I just pick up my phone 
and I go to Lightroom Mobile, and there's all my pictures right there. And then you click on the picture, and you click on the share button, and it, um, it has a, a save photo option. It used to have an Instagram option, but Instagram has changed something that they don't allow this to work anymore, where I can beam it right to Instagram. But now I just save it to my phone, then go to Instagram and upload my best pictures. And it is just a great way to get my favorite pictures out there that I that I shot with my great camera, not not with my iPhone only. And so cool. I highly recommend Lightroom Mobile to you. And so it's it's nine ninety nine a month for that. And honestly, that is totally worth it to me just for Lightroom Mobile yeah. because of all the advantages it gives me. It lets me post my picture to Instagram and Facebook and Twitter all at the same time without any extra input from me. And that, I mean, that's just efficiency. <laughs> and I'm not a very efficient guy, so <laughs> I all I can get. Yeah, well, my, one of my New Year's resolutions uh, uh, is to use Light, Lightroom Mobile a bit more. Um, Excellent. Yeah, Santa. I hear Santa might be bringing me an iPad Pro, so I think Ooh, that might, that might encourage me to we, do that. We may have to have a whole class next month on your iPad Pro. Yeah. yeah. All right. So looking through our questions here, um, James is asking if if we have any comment on the uh, importing uh, screen change that we saw in six point two, twenty fifteen point two, and then went I away. We got to see it. Um, he actually liked it, uh, and. Uh, and that's fine. I, the only problem I had, and and for anyone who wasn't paying attention, you know, for that little bit of time, uh, when 6.2, 2015.2 came out, uh, Adobe, you know, kind of just threw a little surprise in there and changed the import dialog, um, the way it looked and the way it functioned in a certain couple ways. Um, there was a bit of a negative reaction <laughs> to that. I think the negative reaction was more due to the surprise factor mm -hmm. and the fact that some functionality that previously – Previously existed went away, such right. as the eject from card automatically and um, the ability to use right. the move option during import and a um, couple other a couple other things. So I think um, I think it's great that they're constantly evolving the program uh, and they're trying to make it make that part, which is a pretty significant part, uh, less intimidating uh, to folks and more streamlined. I just I just hope that in the future. Um, what we'll see is a little more heads up <laughs> and a little more opportunity to, you know, kick the tires before, you know, the, the, where I where I feel uh, badly is for people who I know, you know, they don't have a lot of time in their day and they're really, you know, trying to crank through stuff. And when something changes like that in your workflow, you, it can really slow you down because you've got to get reoriented to things. Maybe you maybe you depended on a certain function there, and so. Um, for all those folks, I, I definitely felt their pain in, in that. Um, so it sounds, you know, I was impressed with how responsive Adobe was, and they completely reverted back to the way it was prior to that. And they apologized, and they have offered to try and bring the community into the into the process a bit more into the future. So I'm hopeful that we'll see, you know, the good things because obviously they spent a lot of time on their end trying to. Put that together. So with a little more, a little more time, more feedback, a little more. Um, I'm afraid heads up. we scared them off. I'm, I'm afraid we. we uh, I don't. I don't think so. They, they're, they're, they're tough, and they, you know, they like, they, you know, they got a lot of feedback. That's that's really yeah. important to them. You know, they got a lot of feedback. And and we had Sherrod on the on the show, yeah, uh, a couple months ago talking about this in particular. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's a. I think ultimately it will be a good thing for all of us. Uh, it was just unfortunate the way I think the way it, the way it came about that was was so negative. So yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, so hopefully that answered that question. Do you have anything more you want to say? You missed it, so I guess I missed it. <laughs> you were too busy working. It, the other bugs threw me off so badly that I couldn't even get to the point of using the, the input yeah. screen. Yeah. Um, Alan's asking, uh, which color space settings do you guys prefer to use in Lightroom? Um, well, let me let me share my screen just so people know what, what yeah. I think he's talking about. Um, and color space uh, means how our computer screens interpret colors on from from our picture files. Is that is that a good way to say it? Well, I think that's part of it. I mean, in uh, <coughs> excuse me, in in Lightroom, there's uh, what's called the working color space. And so, like when we're in develop, um, we 
are working on an image, and this happens to be a, a DNG file, so it's a raw image. And so Lightroom is able to um, have access to as much of the raw data as possible by using a version, essentially a, a version of the Profoto RGB color space in, in a 16-bit uh, color space. So it, that just means it has a lot, has as much access to all the data that I captured with this in this raw capture as possible, so that when I'm moving sliders around, it's got more data to work with, and um, hopefully get get better results. Even though uh, because the the limitations of my display uh, is what kind of what you were saying, um, the color gamut that my display can uh, show me is is much smaller than what is actually in there. But even that aside, I still would rather have access to the data that I captured. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you can't change Lightroom's working color space. So it is what it is. So the only time you can make, so you make a change is if you go up to the uh, preferences, external editing, and then there's the options to change uh, the file format, color space, bit depth, and enter in a resolution metadata uh, tag. <clears throat> it doesn't actually change the pixel dimensions of the image. It just sets this resolution to 300 or 240 or whatever floats your boat there. It's not really that important. Um, but the default settings are what I use, which is TIFF, Profoto RGB, 16-bit. And that means that if I send this photo off to Photoshop, uh, the copy will be a TIFF uh, file format. And this TIFF file copy will have a Profoto RGB color space and will be a 16-bit uh, bit depth. And that just means now that I'm rendering this raw data to pixels, I still want to try and maintain as much of that raw, uh, much, as much of that information, that data as is possible, uh, when it's being rendered to a TIFF in, in pixels, um, and so that's just what I go with. Um, right. So for some folks, maybe they want to choose at this point to <coughs> drop down to an 8-bit color space because the file size is smaller. I think that used to be a compelling argument when. You know, hard drive space was more expensive and limited, and so people, you know, were were uneasy going to 16-bit because you know you throw a few layers on a 16-bit uh, TIFF or PSD, you're you know you're looking at a especially with something you know from a 30 mega you know megapixel camera, you're looking at a pretty big file. Um, so, but for for me, I just feel like if I need to save space, I can always convert to 8-bit in Photoshop after I've done the editing. So I'd rather have all the data while I was editing. And then in Photoshop, as my last step, I can, if I'm really that worried about file space, I can flatten all my layers and then convert to uh, Adobe RGB and then convert to an 8-bit file. And uh, now I've, I've had all the data while I was editing, and the final version is going to be much smaller. I mean, so you could, you could definitely do that, too. So um, that's just what I prefer to do. Yeah. If I'm going to capture it, I might as well use it as much as possible uh, while I'm working with it, and then worry about the other stuff uh, during output time. For sure. And we should we should probably give a tip on output in a minute as well. Yeah. Uh, Cecil was just asking that he right. couldn't find the Lightroom Mobile Sync button. And the the problem there, Cecil. Well, let me show you my screen. Um, the problem is I forgot to show you a step that you'll need to do here. And the reason is you need to come up here and click on the top left of your screen. And you'll have to activate Sync with Lightroom Mobile. Um, mine is, if I hit pause, then it, it'll either show pause or it'll show start. And if you hit start, then you, you may need to log in to your Lightroom, uh, to your Adobe account to get this started. But all you need to do is click in the top left corner of the Lightroom screen and activate this the sync with Lightroom Mobile. And that assumes that you're using uh, Creative Cloud. <laughs> so if you have right. Lightroom 6, yeah. you Lightroom don't have a Lino Lightroom 6, you're not going to have that uh, option. Yeah. There. yeah. Um, uh, Jack is asking for some clarification. So he'd, he'd appreciate yeah. the answer to this question. If I choose import from disk, do I lose the work that I have done inside of Lightroom? Well, And that's going back to what we were talking about with, with the metadata import. Yeah, that that I'll say here's a here's a that depends uh, answer. So, if say you did a bunch of work in Lightroom's development module, moved a bunch of sliders around, 
all right, and you've done nothing else uh, to that photo any, in any other program, but for some whatever strange reason, um, you get that message, okay, and you hadn't previously uh, had Lightroom write from the catalog to the photos metadata. All right, so right now we know for sure that all the work is in the catalog and no information you know, related to the work you did in Lightroom has been written to the, to the photo itself, okay? So there's definitely a difference right now. If you choose import from disk, all right, you're gonna get nothing <laughs> that's, you know, all the data that exists in the photos uh, XMP metadata space, there's no develop settings written in there. You're gonna import that into the catalog and that's going to replace what's in the catalog. And yes, you could lose the work you did because it's it's trying to make Lightroom's trying to make both of those places have the same information, right? Yeah. Uh, for instance, on that picture that I showed you, where I where I had the problem, I had used the uh, spot removal tool on some of the blemishes on her face. And when I hit that button, it imported the settings from the disk and removed my uh, changes. It removed those spot removal tool, uh, spots that I had touched up. So one way I get around it, uh, Jack, is to, if I've done, if, if it's develop problems that I'm, d develop slider movements that I want to preserve, I'll first do a copy. I'll just do control C, command or control C, and select everything, and then import the settings. And then if it changes stuff, I just press command V, and it reapplies the slider settings that I had previously. Now that's weird. Now that should not that should not be it's a weird bug, but it what we're happening. So that's um, why it's a bug, right? Yeah. So now if you if you start with a photo, you know, like a, a raw file, say you start with a raw file, and you make all your develop changes, including spot removal, and then you send a copy with those Lightroom changes to any external editor, right? All of the work you did in Lightroom is going to be rendered into pixels, and in, in, when this copy is created, mm -hmm. okay, this copy should no longer be dependent on the metadata instructions that are stored in the catalog because then actually it actually got all the changes applied to it. Um, so if I do some more work in any third party editor, whether it's Photoshop or anything, um, I should just be messing with the pixels and the metadata of that copy, um, you know, should not have any of those develop adjustments that I need to be worried about anymore because those were all actually applied to the photo. Um, so it doesn't make sense to me why you would uh, have to do that, but I'll say it, bugs don't make sense sometimes. Uh, right. And if I had that that dialogue, that icon appear on the copy, and I imported the settings from that copy back to the catalog, I shouldn't expect to see my any any Lightroom changes go away because those Lightroom edits were actually applied to the copy itself. So um, I haven't experienced that one. So for me, I mostly experienced it on maybe JPEGs that came in, or I don't know why the Lightroom perceived them to have changed, but something triggered that uh, icon to appear. Yeah. And so I always just choose override settings. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, and, it's just that have, bug with the plugins is where I get it. Yeah. And, and so Jack's got a follow-up question. If he, if he does a round trip from Photoshop, um, will you lose further work that you do later in Lightroom? Uh, you probably won't see this problem from Photoshop in particular. I've never yeah, seen. But that. if you, you know, like I said, if you create a, if you send a copy to Photoshop and it becomes a TIFF or it becomes a PSD, whichever, all right, all the work you did on the original inside of Lightroom, all of that, all those edits were applied to the data when this copy was created. Right. And now, if you immediately come back and you're looking at this. You save it in Photoshop, you close it in Photoshop, and now you've got the original and you've got this copy, and you see that message on the copy. You should be able to choose either option because there's nothing nothing in the metadata that's important at that point on the copy. All right. So and you really shouldn't see the problem. You, you yeah. the question mark. Or that's right, you shouldn't. But let's say you did. Let's say you did. Something, say you did. So I would just choose at that point, just choose overwrite settings and have Lightroom write from the catalog to the photo to the copy. And it'll go away. All right. That's always the safest choice, assuming that you do all of your work in Lightroom, because that's the most important place you want to preserve that work. All right. So hopefully that answers your question. But really, it should be that should be kind of a real edge case scenario that you get that. But sometimes you do. Uh, and if you do, the safest option is usually just uh, have Lightroom write from the catalog 
and overwrite whatever metadata is in the photo. And that way you're preserving what you did inside of Lightroom. In Levi's weird bug case with that plugin, um, he says he's, he's only experiencing the changes being reflected in Lightroom when he imports from that particular photo. But that's pretty, that's pretty edge case. I'll have to try that. I'll just see, I've got that plugin. I'll have to see if I can recreate that. Make sure, yeah. make sure they know about that one, so. Good. Bug. All right, uh, Dana has a question. <clears throat> um, I recently got Creative Cloud package for photographers, but I can't update my iPhone 4 to anything more than uh, uh, iOS 7. And the mobile programs all require 9, ISO, iOS 9. Is there anything I can do besides buy a new phone to get the Adobe mobile apps? I don't know, but yeah. I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think your, your iPad or you certainly could go Android too, but uh, yeah, I think if it's uh, if the apps are limited, well, there are some apps that do have access to older versions of certain. Because <coughs> I, I still have somewhere an iPad one kicking around, and right. I know I can't use it for much, but some I apps do have anymore. <laughs> yeah, some apps have an older versions available. I don't know about Lightroom Mobile because it's so it's so new, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm sorry. I'm gonna. That's okay. Don't don't apologize. It's still good. Um, but hey, you know, this is the time of year to buy new stuff. You know, help the economy. <laughs> Get that Apple stock uh, a little higher for folks. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Um, I'll sell you my iPhone five so I can upgrade. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jack was saying, no, no, I bring it back to Lightroom, do further work in Lightroom, then all of a sudden get that message. All right, well, Jack, in that case, yeah. if you've only done work in Lightroom after, you know, you brought it back, then you want to only choose the option to overwrite settings, you know, from Lightroom to the photo, all right? That's going to preserve the work you did inside of Lightroom, all right? So hopefully that, uh, and that's weird. It's a, it's a weird thing, all right? Just remember the safest thing is to write from the catalog to the photo, unless you know for sure you've done something outside of Lightroom. So right. sorry to make our whole show about that, <laughs> that error message or that one, but that, that's how it goes sometimes. We need a, a station identification break here, right? Okay. Hey, this is Photo Focus, uh, December Lightroom Hangout, with my buddy Levi. Hey, Levi. And hey, we're, uh, we're glad to be here. We're glad you're here, and we're grateful to our sponsor, HDR Soft, yeah. uh, for helping us bring this to you. Yeah, it's a great program, really integrates uh, well with, uh, with Lightroom uh, and with Photoshop, um, and uh, does a fantastic job. Uh, even though Lightroom has HDR functionality, I think it's still the go-to app for, for anyone who's really serious about doing uh, HDR uh, work with a lot of control um, and, uh, and getting great results. I'll have to have Ron Pepper back on again. He's, he's an awesome guy uh, to have on to help us uh, learn a little bit more about uh, Photomatics. So, right. um, yeah, and so it's still time. You still have 10 minutes-ish, and maybe we'll go a little over since we start a little bit late. Uh, get your questions in and uh, or comments, uh, and we'll we'll continue on. Um, Josh is, uh, Joshua, sorry. Uh, if you're still taking questions, I've never used the book, web, or print tabs <laughs> or face detection. <laughs> Would you like to talk about any highlights or use of those that you like? I have a, I have a use. All right, go for it. I have a use. Let me, let me share my screen. And uh, entire screen. Oh, and click on me. And here we go. We go to Lightroom. And here's what you do. You come up here and you right click. And then you turn off the map. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and turn off the web. <laughs> I might hang on to book because I'm, I'm more likely to use these. Yeah. Um, and like I said, <laughs> I do use the uh, the print module for. Well, Josh has printed with me before when I when I used to live near near Joshua. Um, I used to use it for printing to my printer, and it, it works really well for that. And then I also use it for doing this fine out layout fine art layout idea that uh, I mentioned before. Where, well, that's a whole other thing. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So when uh, when Levi is turning those off, he's actually just hiding the the tabs. Just uh, hiding the tabs. Yeah, yeah, not really not doing anything more than that, and you can very easily bring them back. Um, well, you know, to be honest, the uh, 
the web module, you know, it did get some upgrades in Lightroom 6 uh, 2015, you know, um, in that it, it did away with the flash galleries that were there, and they're now all HTML5. Um, the thing about Lightroom's web gallery that uh, it's important to keep in mind is that it creates these kind of standalone uh, galleries, all right, in a very simple way. Um, and they really and they require that you have a website that has FTP uh, access, all right. So it wouldn't even like, wouldn't even work for some place like Squarespace because Squarespace is a little different there. At least last I used it. Um, but if you have, you know, if you go through some some host uh, internet hosting provider like Blue Bluehost or something like that, and you have a domain and you have a hosting and you have FTP access. Uh, and you don't have any other web savviness, and you want to just to create a web gallery and upload it to your web space and send the link to someone to visit this gallery. Um, you know, it does what it does. You know, it's a very simple, creates a very simple right. click through web gallery. Um, I know some people who, <laughs> yeah, some people that's all they have time for. They just want to create a simple little uh, portfolio like a uh, standalone web gallery, and they that's their that's their web presence, all right. So if that's all you need, then yeah, it works. Now there is a um, uh, a third party developer, uh, the TurningGate.net, uh, a guy named Matthew Compagna, who is a fantastic uh, developer, and all he does is devote his entire time to developing the most killer third party web galleries for for Lightroom, and. Uh, these, what's so great about these is they're actually really can be a full function featured, integrated with WordPress uh, website with all the bells and whistles um, you could want in a website. And um, like I know, I'm pretty sure Terry White from Adobe still uses his plugins for his own website. Um, so that's that's a really strong endorsement of Terry, who's incredibly tech set. I mean, the guy. The guy forgets more in a day than I'll ever know about any of these programs. So um, uh, it's a pretty cool. So if you want to check out some more, you know, if you're interested, if you don't have any use for web, then I guess you won't use it. Um, the print module is great. Uh, if you if you have a printer, I'm pointing to my printer over here. If you print your own stuff, um, the print module is really fantastic. I just did. I teach a uh, at a community college intro to Photoshop class, and at the end I had to. To print uh, some of the students' work for our end of the semester show, and um, I just imported it all into Lightroom and printed out 20 prints, you know, like that. It was just so easy, much easier to do than to do it in Photoshop. Um, and you can save templates, which is right. one of Lightroom's strong suits is is how much you can save certain things as a template or a preset to reuse over time. So for, for those reasons, it's uh, print module is fantastic. Book, hey, if you like to create your own photo books. Integration with the blurb is real simple. It's pretty, uh, you know, the cost is pretty reasonable. The results are pretty reasonable. So uh, once you get the hang of it, you can make great Christmas gifts. It's a little late to do that now, but they make great. <laughs> just just to let you know. Yeah, they make great beginning of the new year gifts too, I guess. Um, That's right. Great Valentine's books. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hopefully that broadly answered your broad questions. Uh, and Jack says, for what it's worth, anytime I have a naughty question, I contact Victoria Bampton. Honestly, Jack, so do we. Yeah, she is the Lightroom <laughs> Queen. Uh, we were honored to have Her Royalness appear with us earlier this year, and she was uh, as delightful as you might imagine. Uh, she is, uh, I, I, I seriously think she is uh, a hero you know, to many because of uh, the, the amount of information she knows about Lightroom uh, puts me to shame by you know, easily. Um, and all the work she's done to create her Lightroom FAQ book and her updates to it is just phenomenal. So, yes, she is the queen. And her name is Victoria. So, I mean, there you go. Um, uh, Jack saying he, uh, he doesn't notice any visual change. Yeah, well, that's because in, in the case, the scenario you outlined with having a TIFF file and doing some work, there's no metadata in there. So, I guess you shouldn't see a change. It's just a bug. It's just it's a weird a thing. Don't lose sleep yeah. over it. You can, like I said, you could just ignore it too. Just ignore it. Yeah. <coughs> cancel button in the middle. Hit yeah. the cancel button. All right. I'll say Dana may take you up on buying your phone. All right. Uh, Peter's asked, how can I how can I undo a reset in develop? How can I undo a reset? So if you hit the reset button and you want to undo the fact that you hit the reset button, 
Um, hit undo. Yeah. Yeah. You just do the edit undo or command or control Z, um, or you open up the history panel on the left side of the develop module, and exactly. all your history steps, just click to the step below the reset, and you'll be right back where you were before. You hit the reset button. Perfect. All right. Um, James is saying, the biggest problem I have with the Creative Cloud is when clicking on the CC icon, uh, you get a blank page. I've done yeah, this. I had that this morning. Oh, oh, you mean in the uh, application the app. manager for the CC app? Yeah, the Creative Cloud app. That, yeah. yeah. Sorry. It does uh, weird stuff. James, yeah. Sometimes I've I've uninstalled the app a couple times, and that's reset things for me. Well, like like you say, sometimes it works, and sometimes it don't. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Let me. Uh, do we have time for me to show one more thing before? Yeah. We, let's uh, both do one more thing. Call it a year. <laughs> Where right. did you go? <laughs> um. I thought this was kind of a fun thing to do um, for the year uh, for your own enjoyment. Oh. Um, if you have if you have a little free time, so I like to use smart collections in a, a couple different ways. And um, here's a little side tip: the the collections and collection sets all sort alphanumerically. So if you want certain things to pop to the top of your list, um, if you put some non-alphanumeric character in front of it it will pop it to the top. So that's why I have an underscore leading here because those are the ones I want to have on the top. And uh, if you don't, you can just right click and choose rename and you can do that to your, you know, for yourself. Um, but that's not, that's not my tip. So one thing I've been doing this, now this catalog I have on this laptop is not my main catalog. It's one I use for show and tell mostly. Um, so it doesn't have as many files in it, but on my desktop machine um, it has a lot more. And what I found interesting and kind of fun, because my desktop catalog spans uh, quite a long time now, um, that if I want to see just photos I shot in a given month, I can use a smart collection to bring those all up. So for example, in July, uh, there were 231 photos taken in July in this particular catalog. Right? And so what that looks like is the smart collection with all of these capture date criteria where the range is in the range of July of 2012, July of 2011, so on and so on, all the way down to 2000 uh, and zero. <laughs> um, so on my desktop catalog, which goes back that far, it's a lot of files. And it's kind of interesting now to see, for me to look back and see in July, uh, you know, because oftentimes you go to the same places, you do the same things in certain times of the year. If you have kids, it's kind of fun to see, you know, them grow over, you know, in the, uh, in the summer, you know, whatever the month is. Um, it just it was just kind of interesting for me um, to look back at this. It doesn't necessarily do anything more for you, but it's just kind of a neat way to leverage the uh, the data that's in this catalog and to display your photos in in possibly a different way than you're used to. Um, in my main catalog too, what's kind of neat about it is I can see which which month do I shoot the most because that one will have the biggest number. Uh, and, <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, so it's just kind of fun, and it's very simple. You just keep hitting capture date uh, in the range of whatever. So if I want to get ready for next year, um, I'll, it's, it's, that's coming right up, isn't it? We'll go to date, capture date is in the range. Let's do a little copy paste here and change the year to 16. Oh my good lord, 2016. Flying cars next year. It's got it's got to happen. And <laughs> and so now, when July of 2016, which still sounds like uh, you know 100 years from now, when that month hits, then those photos will automatically start appearing. So I can actually, hey, if I had a lot of free time, I could do this on into the future, and hit save. And when that ha when that when that month happens, and I have photos taken in that month, then then they will just start to appear here. And so this just doesn't have that many. Uh, that this catalog doesn't have that many photos in it, so it's not giving you that same depth. But hopefully, you get the idea. It's very simple to make, and you just easy to keep updating uh, every year. So. Awesome! Thanks, Rob. Huh. I've got a tip, and I'll answer Ken's question about a keyboard shortcut for uh, unlocking the crop in Lightroom. So, start with going to the crop. 
And that, that shortcut is pressing the letter R. I don't know why it's R. Maybe it's resize or whatever. Crap. Oh, yeah, crap. <laughs> pirate board shortcut. It was a pirate who was doing that. Or you can click on that little icon. I mean, the keyboard shortcuts are so fast and easy to use. So um, R gets me into the crop, and now I can crop like this. But when this little lock here is locked, it, it maintains the original aspect ratio. Or if I change the aspect ratio, that lock keeps it to, to whatever the aspect I choose is. But if I press the letter A, there it goes. <laughs> yep. Press the letter A, it unlocks and locks. So A as in alpha, as in absolutely unlock this thing. <laughs> keyboard shortcut. And uh, that works really nicely. And then here's a, here's, a, here's a bonus tip. If you do Command or Control, Alt, and R, it resets the crop. So wow. Command, Alt, R resets the crop. That's, a, that's one of the shortcuts that I will hear and then immediately forget. I use that one. <laughs> I don't know how I learned it, but I use it. Like every picture I, I look at. Because I copy and paste settings a lot. Yeah, like I'll, I'll so. copy from this picture over to another. Oh, I, I may have copied the, the crop as well, so I'll hit Command, Alt, R. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, you know, if that's what you got to use it or you lose it, right? That's right. And uh, obviously, I'm not using it, so I lose it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my tip for you is use the radial gradient tool, the radial filter, this guy right here. Uh, yes, I know. You, you're love. Radial. I love this thing. Shift-M is the shortcut, and you draw a gradient on here. And just look at the magic it's going to do. Watch this. I'm going to pull this thing down here. So it's, it's circular. It's an ellipse. And just, just play with it. Now the key thing here is this little invert mask button on the bottom right. And um, when you hit invert mask, now it's working inside the, the circle. Whereas before it was working on the outside of the circle. So I'll turn this up, give it a little action like that, maybe a touch of exposure. And then we hit duplicate. And so now I've doubled up the settings. And now if I hit uninvert the mask, now I'm working outside of that same circle in exactly the same areas. And I can create a, a gentle vignette, or I can resize this sucker and uh, change, change things around. If you press and hold the shift key, it maintains the shape of that mask. It's a wonderful tool. <laughs> and I use it all the time. And I, I think you should really use it too. Rob, I am about to run out of. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> you, you timed it well, though. You got eight percent. That's right. We're, we're uh, good. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Um, so hey, so here's the one last tip from both of us is that this is the twelfth hangout we've done this year, yeah. and all eleven other hangouts, including this one, are available. They're archived immediately. They're saved for posterity, and easily accessible through PhotoFocus.com um, under our Lightroom Learning Center. You can find a bunch there. There's a, on the side menu there, there's a tab for uh, some of the categories, and I think uh, Hangouts is one of the categories. And you can see not only all the Lightroom Hangouts that we do, but the HDR Hangouts, and there's a Photoshop Hangouts, and uh, Business Hangouts, all of those. Yeah. There's lo lots of, kind of Hangouts that Rich Harrington uh, does, and Levi does, and I do, and um, all the other contributors there. There's just a ton of content over there on photofocus.com. So um, make sure you like PhotoFocus on Facebook if you're a Facebook user or circle it on G+, if you're using that still. And um, definitely follow us on Twitter. And there's just so much content coming out of PhotoFocus, all free, um, by just an incredibly growing number of talented people that I'm uh, honored to be among. So there, how's that for a nice, something nice to say? Thanks, Rob. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> And we have, I've drawn our raffle for the complimentary license of HDR Soft's Photomatics. And nice. This is Rob Silvan. Alan Gale. Hey, all right, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. I think in. Alan's still here because he just, he just said a nice thank you. So, Alan, if you're still here, if you're still still here, let us know that you're still still here. So Wayne that, has another question for us. And um, what should Alan do? Now that he's a winner, and he will chime in here momentarily to say, Alan should just send me an email with his name and his email. So, Alan, send an email to 
Levi at photofocus.com. That's really easy to remember. Levi at photofocus.com. So um, everyone who's sending a nice thank you're all very welcome. Thank you for watching because, to be honest, we wouldn't be able to do these if nobody watched. Right. <laughs> right? We're going to close this with a sing-along of carols. <laughs> <laughs> Until Levi's battery dies uh, for good. <laughs> we'll close out the year. <laughs> Sorry, I think we're up. <laughs> All right. Hey, Alan is there. He's, Thanks, he's Alan. chimed in. So excellent. Um, yeah, so please tune in in 2016, which I can't believe is just a week away. Uh, for our next series of Hangouts that hopefully will continue. And, uh, yeah, couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you, Levi, for everything you've shared this year. Thank you, Rob. Where can we find you? Well, let's go to photofocus.com. There's so much stuff there. I'm among it. And uh, be happy to run into you. Hey, maybe out in the world. Yeah, for are, sure. you doing any, are you doing any Hangout uh, walk? Photo walks anytime soon? Um, I, I might get convinced to do one in, in Colorado Springs next week if, okay. uh, if anybody – suggests that idea and uh i'm planning one in atlanta on the 9th would be the ideal date for that if, if i'm going to pull that off and i'll be at imaging usa in atlanta as well as the mystic wedding seminar in portland the oh, same cool. the week of the 12th 13th of Excellent. january yeah and find me on instagram you'll see all my latest <laughs> iphone pictures and now you'll there. know yeah that they came through lightroom mobile before that's they right that's right well, Levi, thank you so much, and uh, have a wonderful holidays with your family. And give them thank my you. Best. You too. And I look forward to seeing you in the new year. And to all a good night. All right. Take care, everyone.